Hello, everyone, and welcome to On the Safe Side, a monthly podcast hosted by the editors of Safety and Health Magazine, the official magazine of the National Safety Council. This is Alan Ferguson, Associate Editor at Safety and Health, and with me, as always, are my fellow Associate Editors, Barry Bettino and Kevin Drewley. Hello there, guys. Greetings. Hey, Alan. Happy Congress. Yeah, happy Congress to you, too. Thank you all so much for joining us for the August 2024 episode of this podcast, number 54 in our history. In this month's episode, we'll take a deep dive into the forthcoming NSC Safety Congress and Expo set for September 13th to the 19th in Orlando, Florida. To register to attend or to purchase exhibit space, please go to congress.nsc.org. We'll give a rundown of the places and events to explore at Congress and Expo in a renamed segment called Don't Miss It. And our resident Congress historian, Kevin, will take us on a journey through time in the history huddle, a staple segment every year before the festivities kick off. We'll also be joined by Dale Lisinski for our five questions with interview. Dale's going to let us know how to get the most out of a safety conference. And finally, Barry will discuss stories from the August edition of Safety and Health for our In This Issue segment. Is everybody ready? Let's go. The August issue of Safety and Health offers an array of articles focused on Congress and Expo. These include many highlights of the three days of activity when the Expo floor is open, from keynotes and technical sessions to the exhibitor list and the annual new product showcase, plus much, much more. We have pages chock full of details from everything happening in Orlando, not including the mouse ears. Alan has a timely feature in this issue on two recent Supreme Court decisions that have a significant impact on OSHA and other safety agencies. The court recently struck down a 40-year precedent known as the Chevron deference and delivered another decision that could affect how legal disputes with OSHA and the Mine Safety and Health Administration are settled. Allen has comments from the justices' written opinions and includes thoughts from both safety and legal experts that he spoke with about these decisions. It's a story that's well worth your time. In addition, I have highlights from a recent NSC white paper called Making the Business Case for Safety Innovation. The white paper from NSC's Work to Zero group shares the benefits of eight key technologies and provides safety and health professionals with a quantifiable foundation for putting together a business case. You can find all of this coverage in your mailbox this month or online at safetyandhealthmagazine.com. This month's episode of On the Safe Side is sponsored by Safety HQ. Join the many contractors who keep their workers safe and stay compliant with Safety HQ, the construction industry's leading safety app. Safety HQ gives you access to job hazard analyses, a library of pre built toolbox talks, or customize your own, and safety data sheets. You can also monitor your team's training progress by tracking member certifications and sending them automated alerts directly to their mobile devices. Plus, make tweaks to your custom inspection forms and fill out hazard reports right within the dashboard. Make safety a priority for your crew and business. Visit myhqsuite.com slash safetyhq to get started. Dale Asinski is no stranger to Congress and Expo, nor any other major safety conference in North America. He has delivered keynote addresses at multiple events, calling on his experiences and helping to change safety cultures at organizations throughout the country. Dale is presenting a technical session called The Best Safety Message Ever Told at 1 p.m. Monday, September 16th, but you're liable to see him around the Orange County Convention Center beyond that. If you do, you might tell him how you're liking his advice. The Vice President of DeVal Safety Equipment in Buffalo and part of NSC's Executive Advisory Board, Dale joins us on this episode to discuss ways to get the most out of attending a safety conference. Dale, we welcome you to On the Safe Side, and thank you for being our guest. Yeah, thrilled to be here. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Well, to get things started, what steps can attendees take to prepare themselves for a good conference before they even travel to the show? That's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. Certainly, we have to go through all the rigors of travel and hotel. You can really leverage this event by putting in a little bit of prep work on the front end. I can't tell you how many times that you experience people that are at the Congress and especially first timers. And it's overwhelming with how many different sessions there are, 
the descriptions of those sessions. Where should I go? Where is room 140B? It can be overwhelming. It's such an enormous event. So I love the question. I would look at it this way. It's a tremendous place for resources of all kinds of information and solutions, but they're all over the place, right? And there's so many of them. I suggest that you identify topics of interest that you may have now, today, in your workplace. We need some help on culture, or we've got to improve our safety training methods. We're not getting enough employee engagement, or our accident investigation programs. I'm going to guess that any topic that you're weak in or you need some help in, you're going to find it at Congress. In fact, you're probably going to find several opportunities. And then jump onto the website and take some time, scroll through. It's beautiful because you get to star your favorites and start diving into some of those descriptions to see who might best match what your needs are. You're going to have a much more successful show and you don't find out that, oh boy, it's one o'clock. Oh my, it's 10 after one. I better jump into something. And you end up in a session that was good, but maybe didn't fit the bill for what your specific needs were. So I would suggest doing that and getting prepared and creating your own itinerary, whether you're scrolling through the app or whatever it might be. I always like to create my own. So I've got my sessions, their locations, their times, and I've got my own personal itinerary that I can reference really quick and easy. Speaking of itineraries, conference itineraries are great, but conflicts or surprises still might occur. What should you keep in mind when choosing which sessions to attend or how to devote your time? What I would do there, Alan, is I would, like I said, come up with that list and I would try to pick out at least three sessions per time frame. So get three favorites and then rate those one, two, and three, because there's a chance that something might be canceled or rescheduled or for whatever reason. Or you can walk in and find out, oh my gosh, there's nowhere to stand. And now again, you're stuck with, uh uh-oh, flip to the app, or do you just walk that long hallway and see where you're going to jump into? So I would take the answer to the first question, identify your needs. I'd have at least three selections per time slot so you can pivot in case someone throws you a curveball in there. Dale, you spoke about the enormity of Congress. And I wanted to ask you, what if you're an introvert? How can you help yourself embrace the breakout conversations and networking that just go with the territory when it comes to conferences? One of the things that I would suggest there is to have a few icebreakers. You have to understand that's an important component of the event. And it's, again, tremendous resources are there for you. One of the best parts of being in the safety industry, the people are just the best people on the planet, right? Safety people are just a special breed. They're just from their core, they're to help people. They're the same people that volunteer at church and school and PTOs and coach Little League and our first responders or volunteer firefighters. They're all of the same kind. So they're super kind people and welcoming. So that's the good news. And I would just have a few go-to icebreakers and put yourself out there. Hey, how have you enjoyed Congress so far? What was your favorite session for yesterday or today? Going back to our original point, right, which is, I'm really looking for some information on blank. Would you have any suggestions? These are simply icebreakers to get the conversation going. And then you may find out a little bit more about what they do, where they're from. When you're doing those types of things, what you put out is what you'll get back. And son of a gun, if you won't find out that, well, actually, I train on accident investigation or I train on fall protection. I have a really robust program. I'd love to share it with you. I'd be happy to. But have a few icebreakers. Don't be afraid. Put yourself out there. Those safety people are super nice. They'll put their armor on you and it'll be great. Like the word that Barry used a moment ago, the enormity of of this event. There's just so much going on at conferences. But when you're out and about, what are some tips when you're in a session just for honing your listening skills and making sure that you're present in that moment, whether your seminar is for one hour or for half a day? I'll go back to the first question. What steps can we take to prepare for the show? Number one, thank leadership for allowing you to attend. Not enough companies do it anymore, and it's super important. 
then ask to bring someone else with you. If you bring two people, your content that you bring back will be 10 times just by bringing one additional person. So that's really important. When you approach the event this way, what you're going to bring back in thanking leadership, they're going to see that you took it really seriously. And this is really good. It was a great investment and they'll be happy to do it next year. So try to get someone else to come with you. That helps with the distractions. And then you also have a plan. You talk about being present. That is a challenge for all of us all day, every day anymore. We're never present. I just went through a seminar and I also read a book that I think the statistic is close to 95% of the time, we are not in the present. We are either in the past or in the future. Regretting something we could have done, should have done, would have done better in the past at the last meeting, the last office, the last conversation we had with our spouse, whatever it might be. Or when is this going to be over? I've got a lot to do before my next meeting, my next blank, my next blank, my next blank, right? And it's because of that device that we have attached to us, the phone. I suggest, it's one of the things that we've adopted at our company, is try to be in the present. You've got to detach from that phone. So we treat it as a doctor's appointment. When you're in your doctor's appointment, you're not answering emails. You're not looking at texts. You're not answering the cell phone. So in your schedule and in your itinerary, know that I'm going to turn my device off or not look at it, put it away inside the meeting sessions while I'm in session. I will schedule time in my itinerary that I have time to look at emails, catch up with people, get back to them. Use your auto reply to let them know you're going to have sporadic availability through the course of the day for the next two days. Try to implement that discipline. That's something, honestly, you could take back to work with you. You could start doing that this afternoon as soon as we're done with our podcast. When people come into your office, put that phone away. When you're on meetings, put that phone away. Avoid being distracted by the phone. And that is one of the the top things I could offer trying to be in the moment and really not multitask. You've delivered previous keynotes at Congress that address how workers' families depend on them to be safe. How have you seen that in action and what makes it such an important value for you? It's unbelievable how that has worked out for the right reasons, which is the core presentation I've done with Congress for 15 years, and it's now evolved into the best safety message ever told that I'll be presenting at one o'clock. It gives employees a different perspective on their own safety that relates to adopting safe behaviors because they want to, not because they have to. And the reason they would want to is because Everyone in the demographic of working adult, for the most part, we're all busting our tails to take care of our families. It's the whole reason we come to work. Oh, by the way, it's the same reason we're coming back to work tomorrow, right? And what we want to do is remind them that the people that you go to work for that sit at that kitchen table each night, they're all waiting on you and counting on you to come back home safe and sound and be able to go back the next day so you can make ends meet and also fulfill your own personal plans and needs. Ultimate plan is to finish working so we don't have to work anymore. We get to retirement. Safety is a beautiful thing because it enables you to do that in the best possible physical condition. And it's also going to enable you to fill your needs along the way of that journey. College tuition, bread on the table, helping kids with their first home, babysit those grandbabies and spoil them. That's exactly what we're talking about. So when you think of it in that way, we'll do anything for our children, anything. In fact, we do everything for our children. He works, she works. I'll take every minute of overtime you can give me so we can live in that neighborhood, send them to that school district. They can play on that sports team. Well, will you wear your PPE for them? Will you make sure you tie off for them? Will you put that cell phone down in the car for them? We give them a different perspective. Hey, if I'm doing it for them, I got no problem doing it. It's been profound the way the message has worked. And there's been so many companies, I mean, hundreds of companies that have brought this message to their employees and dozens and dozens that have actually employed this culture program around this messaging. And what happens there is the company gets a chance to let their employees truly know, hey, you matter to us. 
you truly matter to us. And the people that matter to you also matter to us. And when a company does that, their safety is the foundation to the relationship and employees will go through the wall for you. In these times that we've all seen where people will leave your company, go cross town for 50 cents an hour and a $2,000 signing bonus. Well, guess what? People would much rather be with an employer that they feel like they matter. They feel like that they're respected and their safety is the down payment on that respect. Companies have seen incredible results. The other thing that comes with that is that safety is absolutely magical. There's so many things tied to safety when it comes to your overall culture. And what happens when you adopt this type of approach and philosophy, you're going to see that employee turnover goes down. You're going to see that quality goes up. There's a direct correlation between safety and quality. The safest companies deliver the highest quality. Waste is reduced. Productivity increases. All these different things that come with employees that feel respected at work offer up discretional energy, and they give you everything you'd ever look for. We prove this with all kinds of statistics and documentation and examples of how this has played out with a lot of our customers with the same type of philosophy. Safety is super cool. Absolutely magic. Besides doing the right thing, it will come back to you. It comes back to those companies in spades with everything they really are looking for. Helps go right to the bottom line, but most importantly, we're doing the right thing to get ourselves there. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights and expertise with us today, Dale. We really appreciate you joining us on the safe side. This was great, fellas. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in Orlando. Who doesn't like Orlando, right? All good. See you at Congress. All righty. See you then. Every month in this spot, we cover stories to be aware of in our In Case You Missed It segment. This month, however, we're pivoting to call this segment Don't Miss It, a rundown of things you'll want to attend at Congress and Expo in Orlando next month. To get things started, I'm going to talk about day one. The opening day of the event at Orange County Convention Center, Monday, September 16th, gets started with the opening session at 8 a.m. local time with an address from NSC President and CEO Lorraine Martin followed by an inspirational keynote speaker, Eric Weinmayer. Eric is an adventurer who has reached the summit of Mount Everest and kayaked the entire 277 miles of the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. Eric is also blind. He will describe how he co-founded a movement called No Barriers, a mission to help people with challenges, face barriers head-on, and live a life of purpose. Eric will share many of the stories from his accomplishments in life, along with his failures, to help everyone try to harness the power of adversity. At 10.30 a.m., the Campbell Institute Forum takes place, featuring a three-person panel that will discuss NSC's serious injury and fatality model. The speakers, including friend of the podcast and NSC Senior Director of Consulting Operations, Lori Guasta, will share insights on practical applications of this innovative approach. At 2 p.m., your favorite podcast hosts are scheduled to record a live episode of On the Safe Side at the brand new Safety Huddle area on the show floor. Stop by and check us out. We look forward to meeting you. Day one also will include more than 50 technical sessions and the opportunity to meet hundreds of vendors who will be sharing the latest in safety solutions on the expo floor. While on the show floor, be sure you're on the lookout for the 10th Annual New Products Showcase, along with the First Look Exhibitor Pavilion for companies making their debut at Congress and Expo. There's also a reimagined wellness lounge where you can take a break to enjoy some self-care. The safety huddle area, as we mentioned, will feature workplace topic discussions with industry thought leaders. Also, please check out the new Time Out Cafe, where you'll find networking sessions with safety pros from various industries and other meetups. To talk about day two, now I'm going to hand the baton over to Alan. Yes, we'll begin day two with the occupational keynote from 8 a.m. to 9.30 Eastern titled A Tale of Two Safeties, BBS and Hop. Tim Page Bodorf and Corey Pitzer will discuss Safety 1 and Safety 2 in a new approach called Safety Seriously. Day two also has the ever-popular OSHA Top 10, a preliminary list of the agency's most cited standards in fiscal year 2024. 
Scott Ketchum, Director of OSHA's Enforcement Programs Directorate, will join our own Kevin Drewley for the Top 10, which is set to take place on the show floor in the Learning Lab, booth 3745 at 1130 a.m. Scott Ketchum is also scheduled to help present OSHA's most interesting cases from 4 to 5 p.m., one of the many engaging technical sessions that will take place Tuesday afternoon in Orlando. Now we go to Kevin for the final day, day three. Day three gets started at 8 a.m. when Dr. Kate Darling, a leading expert in social robotics and research scientist at the MIT Media Lab, delivers the closing keynote covering the future of human-robot interaction. The closing keynote has been tech-driven of late, and this will continue the trend. Kate's personal website, www.katedarling.org, explains that she is, quote, forever interested in how technology intersects with society, unquote. To that end, Kate writes a monthly column for BBC Science Focus magazine and also is the caretaker for multiple domestic robots, including one named Mr. Spaghetti. Hmm, sounds like someone in the Hill neighborhood in my hometown of St. Louis has company with that one. Professional development seminars on day three will be held throughout the day and technical sessions will take place from 10 to 11 a.m. and 1 to 2 p.m. The expo floor will open at 9.30 a.m. immediately following the keynote and remain open until 1 p.m. If you haven't stopped by the NSC booth at that point, it's another chance to say hello to members of the council and our staff. While you're there, you can get your picture on the cover of Safety and Health as a lasting memento. And if there's something you don't want to miss in Orlando, check out the Congress and Expo website at congress.nsc.org or download the handy dandy show app wherever you find your mobile apps. Eighty-four years ago, renowned author Tom Wolfe published the novel You Can't Go Home Again, a notion frequently cited and now disproved. That's because we're running it back with this segment, which we call the History Huddle, in the Congress host city in which it debuted three years ago. Ardent listeners may remember that this segment that takes a glance at the event site and its history started in 2021, the most recent time Congress headed to Orlando. 2024 marks Congress's ninth trip to Orlando and the sixth occurrence in which a presidential election was held that same fall. The trend started in 1988 and continued in 1992, 1996, 2000, 2012, and now 2024. In fact, the 1992 show overlapped with Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd. We all know how diligent safety pros are, so we can only imagine the terrific volume of absentee ballots that were cast that year. All our parts of Congress have stretched in November only three times since that banner day for Bill Clinton. 1995 in Dallas, 2006 in San Diego, and 2011 in Philadelphia. As always, this huddle wouldn't be complete without a special shout out to NSC Library Manager Elena Kolosh for her extensive research and assistance. Speaking of diligent, the Excel spreadsheet that she compiled includes various particulars for each previous show. This segment also would feel empty, at least in my opinion, without at least a marginal tie in to the bygone ABC sitcom Coach, which pivoted its setting from Minnesota to Orlando for its final two seasons. You'll now be enlightened to know then that 1992 and 96 also marked years in which Coach earned individual accolades at the Emmy Awards. In 92, Craig T. Nelson, alias Hayden Fox, earned a primetime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. Four years later, the late Tim Conway took home the primetime Emmy for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series. He played accident-prone gardener Kenny Montague in an episode called The Gardener, imagine that, which included this memorable exchange between Kenny and Hayden. Kenny says, you know, gardening to me is just like coaching to you. Yep, once it's in your blood, it's in your blood. To which Hayden replies, Kenny, hypothetically speaking, if you're not good at what's in your blood, shouldn't you start thinking about a transfusion? Man, that Craig T. Nelson, and I'm sure if we had rights to a laugh track, we'd be playing it right now. With that, though, we'll break the huddle until next time. Thank you, as always, for your interest. Thank you so much for joining us for this month's episode. We know your time is very valuable and we appreciate you spending some of it with us. If you want to join your three favorite podcast hosts at Congress and Expo in Orlando, or just two of your favorites and me, you can register at congress.nsc.org. The website also has information on educational opportunities and how to secure your booth space on the show floor. Speaking of booths, you can find the Safety and Health Magazine team at the National Safety Council booth, number 1927 at the Orange County Convention Center. We encourage you to visit another website, safetyandhealthmagazine.com slash podcast, to check out any of our past episodes. 
That includes our live tapings from previous Congress and Expo show floors. Among those live events was an interview with current OSHA leader, Doug Parker. And we're set to have another live taping this year, so please keep your eyes open for that. You can also visit safetyhealthmagazine.com for stories, news, and insights from around the safety world. That includes our upcoming coverage of Congress and Expo and our show daily. Does your organization have a CEO who just gets it when it comes to safety? If so, we want to hear all about that person. Nominate your leader for the 2025 CEOs Who Get It, an annual awards recognition program for the National Safety Council for leaders who demonstrate a personal commitment to worker safety and health. Whether your organization has 50 or 50,000 employees, you can submit a nomination by August 25th at safetyandhealthmagazine.com slash CEOs. The original music for this podcast was composed by Steve Maslin. Thank you so much, Steve. And a big thank you to all of our NSC colleagues behind the scenes who make this podcast go. We'll be back next month to have more safety-related discussions, talk to trusted voices from around the profession, and hopefully make you smile a little. In the meantime, please stay on the safe side.